because everybody's talking about the top five all time, Mount Rushmore all time NHL. Where does Sidney Crosby be placed in that conversation as of right now? And it was all sparked by his performance this season and where he's at and the paces that he is on. 40 points in 31 games for Crosby this season. He's on pace for 45 goals and 106 points, despite not scoring at all against the Carolina Hurricanes yesterday. Horwat, where do you rank? Let's let's ask this a different way. Is he a top five player of all time? Yes or no? And then we'll get into it more. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> he's absolutely top five player. There's no reason to rank the old, you know, number one is this guy, two, three, no. Because the top four or five are always, it's always going to be the discussion of who falls where, who cares. Mm-hmm. Sidney Crosby is in the top five. There's no doubt about that at this point, because obviously a lot of this discussion is sparked from, you know, just the season he's having. It's the fact that he's having it at the age of 35. There never seems to have been uh, a set, a setback in his career that he hasn't come back from and that he hasn't slowed anything down through these 18 seasons. He's in his 18th season. Mm -hmm. This is incredible stuff for, uh, any player, the fact, first of all, playing 18 seasons in itself is a start. Having this many, having this much production through all 18 years, playing through what he did, um, it's it's just impressive, and it is exactly the type of pedigree that puts him in the top five. And another reason why this dis- discussion is getting brought up is, you know, the Ovechkin thing. He scored his 800 goal. Now, where does he stand among these guys? Mm-hmm. You know, does his goal scoring ability push him into the top five whereas I think he's close I would say maybe he's six just because Sidney Crosby has that ability to make everyone around him better mm-hmm. he is not the he's definitely not this at the same level of goal scoring ability but he's mm-hmm. close if Sidney Crosby wanted to become a goal scorer he could mm-hmm. and I mean let's just tell it like it is in the grand scheme of old hockey men a couple of cups matters you know, a couple of MVPs matter. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of con smites matter. He's got the hardware to really drive home the idea that Sidney Crosby is definitely better than Ovechkin in this situation. And that pushes him into the top five because Ovechkin's definitely a top 10. You see what mm-hmm. he's doing oh, yeah. into his into his mid to late 30s now. Um, but I still think Crosby has the upper hand and that puts him firmly, I would say, into the discussion of the top five. I would agree with you. He is top five. You said it's it's useless to rank. I ranked because <laughs> I think that there's clear. I think there's a clear three tiers here for the top ten in the National Hockey League, and in my opinion, in their history, I think the top three unencumbered. And I don't think there's anybody that I see in the league right now. Yes, even Connor McDavid that will touch these top three. Mario Lemieux is the greatest player of all time. He is. He's mm-hmm. the most naturally gifted player of all time. And I know that ifs and ifs and ifs, and you can say it time and time again, if ifs were fits, we would all be really drunk. And Mario Lemieux would be a lot closer to a lot of Wayne Gretzky's records. It's just, it's a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Okay. He doesn't even have a thousand games in the NHL. Yeah. And he had multiple comebacks just because if he didn't, the team would be in Kansas City. So, Mario Lemieux is the best player of all time. Wayne Gretzky is right there. It's literally a 1A, 1B situation, but I do give the edge to Lemieux. What you get with Wayne Gretzky is what happens when a great player avoids major injury for the majority of his career. No massive absences. And he has Marty McSorley by his side at all times. Currently. Yes, correct. Correct. Not currently. Um, He might be with him right now. I don't know. Uh, Wasn't Marty McSorley part of that trade to LA? Like, yes, he wasn't going anywhere unless he had his bodyguard with him. That's how he was able to do this. Yeah. But no major absences. That's why all his records are really far and away ahead of others. I mean, I understand that Ovechkin is chasing him in goals. That's fine. But Ovechkin's not going to touch any of his other records. Nobody's going to touch him in points ever. Maybe McDavid if he plays forever. But again, it's a lot different of a league right now. Is he going to be able to do that? You know, so we'll have to see. But I, I do think that Wayne Gretzky is just the picture perfect what you get when you see a player play his career unencumbered by massive setbacks. Mm-hmm. Number three is Bobby Orr. Similar to Mario Lemieux, career cut extremely short, but he's clearly the greatest defenseman of all time, and nobody can argue that. 
an, another major what if in hockey history. What if Bobby Orr plays as long as Wayne Gretzky, stays as healthy as Wayne Gretzky, or plays as long as a Gordy Howe? What does that look like? So yeah. I have those as the top three. Then I don't know who to put higher. Right now, it's probably Gordy Howe at four, Sidney Crosby at five. But I think Sidney Crosby, by the end of his career, if he gets in the top five in points, which I believe he will, I wrote an article over the summer that I can retweet out again, what he has to do to do that, and he is certainly on pace to make his mark this season. He could finish top five all time in points, and he'll be one of the very few current day players to be up there. Then I I put him ahead of Gordy Howe. But regardless, it's Gordy Howe, Sidney Crosby, four five, and I don't see that changing. I do have Alex Ovechkin uh, in that third tier. Because I think the first tier is the top three, Lemieux, mm-hmm. Gretzky, or then it's Crosby, Howe. And then the third tier is five or six through 10 for me. And that's Ovechkin, who I would put right now at number six and probably going to stay there. Maurice Rocket Richard, Bobby Ooh. Hull, Nick Ooh. Lidstrom, and Martin Broder. Ooh, that's a fun list. That's what I have as my top 10. And, and yeah. listen, people can say, listen, you, you weren't old enough to watch. You don't appreciate the old players. I appreciate Gordy Howe, I appreciate John oh, yeah. Beliveau. Oh, yeah. But just what these players have done, and I, I think there is this blind just way of looking at it that forwards and points are all that matters in hockey. No, watch the way Nick Lidstrom played defense. Watch the way Martin Brodeur played in net. It changed the game. It changed the outlook of their entire team's future, their franchises. That's why I have those guys up there, but this is not a podcast to get into that. This is a podcast mainly about Sidney Crosby or in a segment mainly about Sidney Crosby. And I have him right now at number five, knocking on Gordy Howe's door for number four. Yeah, and he's up there. I just like I like judging your list because once you get past five, it's, hell, once it's you get a past, crap shoot. Yeah, once you get past three, really, because a lot of people um don't want to have Sidney Crosby in this discussion. Um, so once you get past the top three, it turns into here come all of the names. You know, yeah. we already mentioned Crosby. But some people wouldn't put Ovechkin up there yet. Um, Gordy Howe is usually going to be in the top five still, regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, but then out of that five, it becomes fun. Like you mentioned Lindstrom. People would say Hashik is better than Brodeur and not put him in the top 10. Like there's people weird would say situations. Patrick with Waugh. That. Same with Patrick Waugh, yeah. Then there's the Mike Bossy, who again, a lot like Lemieux and Orr, mm-hmm. shut down pretty early. Um and of course, as I'm trying to have this discussion, all of the names have left my head. Yeah, Mark Messier can be in this discussion somewhere. Ron Francis, mm-hmm. um, and then just sleepers that you just kind of forget about: Luke Robitaille or mm-hmm. ugh, Paul Korea, who again, career cut short. Joe Sackick, Peter Forsberg, Steve Eiserman, Stevie Y. If he really wanted to, uh, Sergey Fedorov. There's some names they could. All those names, if you were to say were in your top ten, not being mad at. At all. Yeah, it's it, it. There's only ten spots, and there are more than ten players that are certainly fitting to be named one of the top ten. And I wouldn't argue. I mean, the big one that you mentioned there was Steve Eiserman. You yeah, know that you that's the one. That, yeah. I, I I looked at this. Well, yeah, that was mentioned there. I looked at this list, and I had a hard time keeping Steve Eiserman off. It was literally between Eiserman, Lidstrom, and Brodeur. And you know, for what I think about the way that those two just kind of changed the the course of their position forever. That's why I have them higher in there. But this, it's a gr- it's a crazy thing to look at, um, for sure. And, and we didn't I even mention think, Yager this entire time. Yeah, and, and Yarmir Yager. Um, but the last thing I'll, I'll say before you know, I let you obviously have your final thoughts on this is leadership wise, Sidney Crosby. I would take over almost everybody on that list. Yep. So what I'm petitioning in lieu of the NBA naming all their trophies for the first time. Once he retires, can we change the Mark Messier award to the Sidney Crosby award? You see, I'd agree with that, except we know how the NHL is, and it would go to Jonathan Taves first, Captain Serious. Oh, my Lord. Come on. Yeah, you know it would. Captain Overrated, Jonathan Taves. Oh, uh, and, so- and that's the thing, too. I, I love Jonathan Taves as a player, and I think he is a fantastic captain. When But once people started saying, hey, he's, he's better than Crosby, hey, he's a better leader than – no, shut up. He's perfectly serviceable. He's a perfectly fine guy. He's probably a Hall of Famer, but he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's not. Mm-hmm. Patrick Kane is. Oh. But, but, but is Jonathan Taves? No, he's not. He's perfectly fine. He's a two-way guy that's half decent. 
at everything he does, but he's not excellent at everything he does like Sidney Crosby. I don't he's know not... why you set me off for some reason. That that yeah, just that set me off today. Jonathan Taves isn't keeping his terrible team afloat. No, and he hasn't for six years. Yeah. yeah. He Whereas... had his run, and then he faded into oblivion. Because Crosby had his run, started to fade, and said, screw this, I'm winning two more Stanley Cups. Yeah. There were some bad there were some bad Penguins teams over the last few years, and uh, Cindy Crosby's the reason why we got anywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, <laughs> Evgeny Malkin 15. as well. <clears throat> Thank yeah. you, Mike Johnston. Hey, and, you know, Evgeny Malkin's in there as well. I forgot about him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it's in the, in the grand scheme of all-time things, I've heard a lot of discussion that in the far future, in the distant future, people are going to look back at the numbers and say Ovechkin was better. And I'm going to say, how are you going to look at the numbers and not look at the hardware? <laughs> Congratulations, he has more goals. Listen, if Ovechkin hits 1,000 goals, which I believe someone has already had that discussion, which is hilarious and, mm-hmm. I mean, really could happen, um, you know, that's fine. That's great. That's one record that he's going to have. And, yeah, Crosby's not going to have any of those records, but he's going to have the hardware. He's at the age of 35 going for his second most productive season ever. We just, how, how how much did we just talk last year about how great it was at Latang? Again, not really in this discussion at all, but had a career year at the age of 35. Had a career year. If Sidney Cross was able to have this sort of production at the age of 35, um, that deserves to be discussed and put onto a pedestal of, here's why he's still so good. Mm-hmm. The people that had great seasons at the age of 35, I, Jacob wrote the, wrote the article for, inside the Penguins, they're not your typical greatest of all times. It's Johnny Busick, who, yeah, great player, Hall of Famer, but not Wayne Gretzky. I forget what his numbers were in the age of 35. But it's not the same sort of thing. So Cindy Crosby setting himself apart. Um, if this production is able to continue to the end of his contract, let alone the end of his career, mm-hmm. uh, he's in this discussion. He's already in this discussion. So mm-hmm. top five player, yeah, 1,000%. Yeah, and I think what you're seeing now is Sidney Crosby is beginning to pull away from Alex Ovechkin, and I think that continues. Um, But I I do hate the fact that when anybody has this discussion, Crosby versus Ovechkin, they denigrate the other player. There's no need to do that. Like, we, 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 you haven't. That's not why I'm saying that. But, like, everybody's like, yeah, Crosby sucks compared to Ovechkin. It's like, no, you're stupid. You are. Like, if you say that, you have no right to have that conversation with any type of platform. Both of these players are Hall of Famers. Mm-hmm. Both of these players are all-timers. We're saying they're both in the top six of all time. Literally. Yeah. And if it, it, it's just a matter of, like, these guys are great, but when I look at Crosby, he excelled at everything. When I look at Ovechkin, he is extremely, extremely talented at a lot of things, but not everything. He isn't. And people say, oh, well, don't bring cups into this. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Being a winner, not a, not just leading your team to wins, not just winning Stanley Cups, winning gold medals everywhere, winning MVPs in international play. It's not all about that. Being a winner in general is a mindset, and you can see it on the ice, and you've seen it with Sidney Crosby from the age of 18 probably to the age of 40. So that's where I give him the edge with that and then all, all a bunch of other things also because – Defensively, Crosby's been better. We can get into this discussion all day. But I was going to say, I just pulled up Ovechkin's plus minus numbers just because they're really fun. He led the league in scoring on multiple occasions and had a minus. He was a minus 35 with 51 goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. So there are clearly arguments to be made for both sides, and people can just throw our opinions to the side because we're on a podcast covering the Pittsburgh Penguins. But at the end of the day, it's, it, it's my unbiased opinion. I know it, it, that can be taken with a grain of salt. People will not believe me, but that it's what it is. And if you don't want to believe me, I really don't care. 